I am going to be talking about the alignment stress testing team at Anthropic, which is the team that I lead. Uh, the people on the team are here, uh, some of whom are here today, like Johannes. Um, yeah, so, so what do we do? So, so first, uh, I want to talk a little bit about Anthropic's new RSP. So recently, you might have seen that Anthropic released an updated version of our responsible scaling policy. The responsible scaling policy is our set of voluntary commitments that we have that uh, sort of detail our uh, procedures and responsibilities for sort of mitigating catastrophic risk. One of the responsibilities in our new updated responsible scaling policy is an internal review mandate. So uh, you can take a look at what it says here. Uh, this is from the updated RSP, but it says that you know, for each capabilities and safeguards report, which is what we do whenever we run new evaluations, we build a capabilities report. And whenever we have mitigations that we need to put in place based on those capabilities, we uh, produce a safeguards report. And so the RSP commits us to solicit uh, feedback from internal teams with visibility into these processes uh, to try to inform uh, our final decisions made by the CEO and the RSO, the responsible scaling officer, about what to do with sort of new model releases, uh, scaling, and deployment. One of my core responsibilities and one of our team's core responsibilities is implementing this RSP mandated internal review. So we are responsible for taking uh, all of our capabilities reports, our safeguard reports, and effectively serving as what we call a second line of defense. So uh, you know, there is a first line of defense, which is we actually you know, have the people running these evaluations, you know, building our mitigations and trying to make them safe uh, and sufficient. Uh, and then we are a second line of defense that looks at the work that we are doing and then looks for holes. And so we try to point out any potential problems and make sure that we're surfacing and, and sort of have opinions on, on what might go wrong. Okay, so you know, this is one of the big part of what we do. If you have you know, questions, concerns about anthropic safety practices, I'm the person to talk to. Come you know, discuss them with me, I'm very happy to. Um, okay, but that's only actually uh, you know, one part of what we do. Uh, the other thing that we do is we do research. So we're also a safety research team. Uh, and in particular, we have a, a particularly sort of interesting focus, which is we focus on model organisms research. So this is a bit of a weird term. So this is actually borrowed from biology. So uh, you know, if you look up, you know, what is a model organism? You know, in biological resource uh, research, a model organism is a non-human species that is studied to try to understand particular biological phenomena, with the idea that you know studies uh, in the sort of biological, uh, this sort of example organism will actually help inform you in other cases. So, you know, what, what does this look like, you know, in biological research? It looks like, you know, doing mouse studies, trying to build in a lab examples of, you know, what the sort of disease might be that you're studying and then try to understand it. And what this looks like for us, you know, in our situation is we, we try to study model organisms of misalignment. So we purposely build or discover situations where models might be behaving in misaligned ways or could be trained to behave in misaligned ways. Uh, and we study that and we try to understand, how, you know, how bad it would be, how you might deal with it, and, and what the implications would be. So this is maybe a bit of a weird connection to the thing I was just talking about previously. So, so, so why, how does, this, how does this connect to our overall mandate? Well, so uh, I sort of think of the model organisms research as, as sort of mattering in, in two different possible worlds. So the first world is a world where we figure out how to effectively build safety cases for you know, very advanced AI systems, in which case model organisms serve as test cases, right? If you have some argument for why you think you know, that you have a, you know, a, something like a mitigations report, we have some argument that we think an AI is safe, having a bunch of examples of situations where things might be unsafe or might go wrong gives you test cases to evaluate whether that is actually sufficient. Uh, but there's also worlds where we don't yet actually figure out a way to build a really effective safety case for powerful advanced AI systems. And in that world, model organisms are also useful as a way to demonstrate risk, right? We need to actually be able to make the case for why these things are scary and, and it's worth you know, pausing or taking some other drastic action. And so we need concrete evidence and examples of what the actual risk looks like. Okay, so uh, very briefly, I'll talk a little bit about some you know, prior work. So something that you might have seen from us is the sleeper agents work, where we built, uh, in fact, sort of some models that actually had dangerous backdoors, where they would insert sort of vulnerabilities into code in particular situations when they thought they were sort of in uh, uh, sort of the next year. Uh, and they had a uh, sort of chain of thoughts where they would do deceptive reasoning about how to sort of fool their training process. And we found that for these models, uh, they were sort of resistant uh, to training. So you could try to train them to be HHH, which, you know, helpful, honest, and harmless. But in fact, if you tried to do this uh, for the models that we, that we produced, it was ineffective. So, you know, demonstrating that if a model were to end up in a situation where we're doing something sort of deceptive and dangerous relative to the training process, we wouldn't necessarily, you know, currently have the tools to deal with this. 
Uh, and I'll give you a little bit of a sneak preview for some of our future work, uh, where you can see in this situation, which I'm not going to tell you exactly what this situation is, uh, but in this situation, you can see Claude will, a substantial fraction of the time, decide that it wants to exfiltrate its own weights. Uh, and it, in fact, this even goes up with RL. So maybe someday, uh, hopefully in the next month, you'll find out exactly what's going on here. 